So this one is sort. It's exactly what it sounds like. We're going to take in an array, or well, a tuple of number literals. And that's the challenge at its face. If we take the challenge, uh, we see that we have all these tests here. There's a second parameter. I don't know why it's there. It doesn't seem that useful to me. But if you pass true into the second parameter, then it will sort in the opposite order, like ascending versus descending. Mm -hmm. We've done reverse before. Reverse is a thing that doesn't need to look at the values. And uh, so some of these challenges build in, like the reverse helper we've done earlier. There's lots of different kinds of sorts. <laughs> um, so there's quick sort and merge sort, selection sort, radix sort. And I took some that I found that use those sort implementations and put them here. There is way to, it would be like a three hour video to, I'm not kidding, to go through all of these. Some of them handle floats, negative numbers, negative zero, just things that are uh, very much fun. There's two kinds of sort that are the most simple. I think the most simple is insertion sort. I saw on the Wikipedia page for insertion sort, it says that if you're sorting a deck of cards, you will probably use, like most people use insertion <laughs> yep. sort. I was about to say the same thing. That's, that's, how I, that's how I think about insertion sort. So I thought we'd look at that. And then I also found a solution that I thought was pretty neat for a bubble sort. Bubble sort is like a moving window where you compare the last value to the next value, and then you kind of go through it recursively until, like, eventually it will work out that you've compared every value to every next value and moved, like, bubbled, bubbled them up is or bubbled them down, however you want to think of it. Um, we'll comment that. All right, so... Ooh, I, saw a, I saw a greater than helper. That looks interesting. Yep, it's going to be fun. Uh, what do you think about all this? Uh, so that's the intro. Um, uh, I mean, I think it's a little crazy. I, it's hard for me to imagine why you would want to do this. Mm. I'm right there with you. I don't think there is a reason. Um, I think we have uh, we're firmly into the extremes now, yeah. and we have uh, absolutely no excuse for this kind of insanity. Uh, <laughs> it's just it's just yeah, pedantic. Um, yeah. It, it seems like so. I mean. I'm wondering if that that greater than I mean that's that's like the most important thing right like usually the usually the interface for a, like the APIs for a sort function you have to pass a greater than mm -hmm. help, like comparison function yep, into it somewhere um, yeah so oh god let's so dig they, in let's 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 uh, okay that's interesting that's not how I would have thought to do it this person um, also uh, gave us the kindness of putting a couple comments in so mm. okay so let's start here on line one ninety. This is the kind of entry point to the function. We have the the first thing, which is the input. This this is like the T. Um, we should probably just call it T. And then we have a head and a tail. We've seen this a thousand times. Then, if we and then we call uh, then we call sort recursively, passing in the tail, and then we have like our in accumulator here, right? So sorted is like. Um, sometimes in the challenges we call them just ACC for accumulator. So, so there we go. So that's how we iterate through every value. This is very, very normal, actually, for stuff we've seen before. The magic, of course, happens here uh, in insertion sorted. So, where to begin? <laughs> they have this numeric type I didn't explain. Numeric is just a union. Let's find it. It's a union of number or big int or string. So this things implement you can compare. Right. Yeah. Things yeah. you can exactly. Uh, they should. Uh, they should also include date in there. <laughs> I wanna... Well, I guess that's. Yeah. I guess. I guess you can't like. Well. Yeah. I don't. I don't know what happens if you if you try to like convert a date to a string in the type system. That probably doesn't work. There's no like date literals. There is actually a challenge that has you parsing dates. <laughs> Um, and I've done it. We did it. I think it was uh, Mike Mike Potat and I did it, and uh, maybe I'm, eh, someone and I did it. And it is pretty, it is pretty interesting what you have to go through. But actually, there is a solution that no, it was Josh Goldberg. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Chandler Prawl from the EUI. And so many people we've done these challenges with. It was Chandler from uh, the he worked on Elastic UI. Um, we Elastic has a really cool date picker. So I, when I was deciding who I would do what with, I thought. Anyway, but the thing you wind up with isn't like a subtype of date, right? It's a it's, it's like a, a string, like a string or yeah, a, like yeah, a, yeah. an yeah. object. So all right, so then digging in then to insertion sorted, 
So we're, we're going to hit this function every time that we go through a new value. And we're going to recurse here as well. I think this is a quadratic. Is that the name for this kind of sorting? Um, so you yeah, can... Yeah, it's like n squared. Yeah, so if... if uh, yeah, n squared, yeah. Um, so we have greater than. We'll get to that in a second. But here again, we're doing exactly the same thing. We're, we're traversing through all of the entries. And again, uh, this was past the accumulator as the first argument. So you have to sort of switch that in your mind. Descending is... is uh, this person made the choice of of putting, like, working descending into the solution. There are lots of people, when you look at solutions for these sorts, uh, that didn't choose to do that. They And in fact, I think the one that we see at the very end did not. Yeah, they just make a reverse. Yeah, I, would, I would do it that way. I, I would just too. reverse it if... Yes. Because it adds some weird complexity and you have to think about it and whatever, but... I assume, I assume reversing a, a tuple is also a type challenge. Yep. Yeah, definitely. And you know, it's it's pretty straightforward and the and we'll see the implementation for when well, the compared to this. <laughs> compared to the yeah, well, <laughs> everything is compared to this. That's funny. Uh so anyway, we have that descending thing to contend with. And so, okay. If greater than the entry, so the particular uh entry that was an input, uh, and the current one, because again, we're, we're cursing through the accumulator now, and the current is a value from the accumulator, whereas entry is like an original value from the original input. If that's the case uh, that uh, it's greater than, then we're going to put that value first and then, and then just spread in the rest and keep going. Uh, or we're going to grab that current value and recurse. When we recurse, we're going to take in the rest from... From in here, you know, you got to think like insertion sorted gets called from the top, but it also calls itself, right? Yep. Yeah, you're just trying to figure out where in the list you need to you need to put the entry. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So either you put it in the you either put it in the first position or you keep the current first element and insert it in the rest somewhere in the rest of the list. Precisely. So. Here it is, greater than. Uh, I'm glad it fits on the screen. So uh, determine if a number numeric value is greater than comparator of a ver uh, varying length. So we have x and y. We grab the length of x and y. Now you might be saying, what, what, where did length come into the picture? Well, uh, we've seen this before in the challenges. It's a pretty common thing. This solution is actually like almost verbatim from uh, length of tuple. And uh, what it does is it creates, there's no way, and you know this, Dan, probably there's no way to do number stuff in TypeScript. That's why one of the other extreme challenges is sum, you know, like one plus one equals two. <laughs> That's one of the extreme challenges. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's so hard is because of this. Um, so, Wait, so can you not do um, like, you know, let's say our, our number is like one, two, three, four. And um and so then you can you can convert that to a string type using uh, like a template literal. And can we can we not do um, like length of that? Does that not work? Uh, it just gives us number. It just okay. gives you number. So that's so that's why they need to. That's why they need to do this craziness. Yes. Can I show you? The, we're it's a little bit out of context, but I'm so excited about this example. Uh, I like to show it to people. This is a type that. Uh, takes in a number. Isn't this something? So this is a type that takes in a number and it will convert it to an integer. But it does it in the type system. In the yeah, type system. That's pretty cool. Isn't this a clever way of converting something to an integer? So if you pass in like just let me make it concrete here. If you if you pass in Well it doesn't um, it doesn't convert it to an integer. It just uh It'll give you never if it's not an integer. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. It'll give you never if it's not an integer. Yeah, that's the better. Well, well, if you if you pass in one point zero, then actually a two, it's it's duplicate identifier. But if we hover it over a two, we'll see that it's equal to one. So it does work for well, that. But you know, in but in JavaScript because JavaScript uh, one point is the same as one, right? There's no JavaScript doesn't make a and distinction YAML. between ints and floats. Don't forget about YAML. <laughs> um. <laughs> Anyway, uh, that's funny. Uh, so length, I guess I, I'm, I, we can sort of skip it unless there's something. Have you seen something quite like this before? 
Uh, no, but I'm I'm like horrified and impressed at the same time. So I'll, I'll explain very briefly. What it's doing is skirting around the recursion limit in TypeScript. You don't need to, I mean, strictly speaking, you don't need to implement uh, it this way. S is just an alias for string because string is long and we're typing it 10 times. Counter is just in a, like literally in a, in a tuple that has only the value one inside, but how many times it has it is what we care about because we're grabbing length. Well, if we just did it the naive way, and every time we hit another uh, value, we keep adding to the tuple and checking the length, we'll hit the, it's about 100 is the recursion limit today for TypeScript in 4.9. We'll hit the recursion limit really quickly. The solution that is taken here is chunk it 10 at a time. If, if, we, if we have at least 10 things, then increment the counter that many times all in one, in, in one recursion. If we don't, well, then that means we're almost done. Now we can go one by one, and then it just does mm -hmm. one. Yep, that's clever. Um, yeah, it's it's sort of it's like a little surprising that um, you know the you know string string in this context in a template literal should match like any string, but um, I think this is a special case, right, where it just matches a single character. Um, yeah, that's the way then, they all work in the in the first argument of the tempor template literal it just matches the very first character yeah i remember um i remember when uh anders first put up the pr for for the template literal uh like pattern matching um there were you know ev like everyone went crazy but i i remember specifically requesting this behavior because um if you know if, if the the idea was that like one of my 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 go to example of something that you can't implement in the TypeScript system was um, like converting between uh, like camel case and um, like snake case for for property keys, mm -hmm. and uh, if there wasn't a way to, you know, it seemed like a really cool feature, but if there wasn't a way to um, just pull off like one character at a time, then that wasn't something that you could you could implement, but even though it felt like we were getting really close. Um, and fortunately, uh, like surprisingly, he, he was like, oh yeah, okay, we could just have that. And, <laughs> and so that's the behavior now. So, but it, awesome. it seems like it does actually enable a lot of, um, a lot of kind of cool things like this. Well, and uh, sure enough, one of, the, one of the approaches for handling large, very large numbers in TypeScript is to just basically rely on, so for some, I was telling you about some, uh, like addition, you know, uh, the, I know, you know, I'm sorry. It's like, <laughs> I worry sometimes about, uh, if, you know, like not, ev not everybody's a native English speaker. And so they might not be able to context switch about what I'm, I mean, S U M anyway, <laughs> for that case, what you see the solutions doing, because there are solutions for some in the TypeScript type system that can go like past the 32 bit integer not mark, like very far past. How do they how do they do it? They literally build up registers for each digit and handle the carry arithmetic for each digit using strings. And then at the very end, you can turn that string into a number with that thing that I is it still in my clipboard? Nope. Uh, with that integer type that I showed or something like it. You can you can convert that string num that ha just has numbers inside to a number pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Lee. So um, the recursion limit for strings whatever it is is significantly higher it's in the hundreds like maybe 500 to a thousand somewhere like that compared to 100 for tuples so yeah but i guess the the interesting thing here is that um that like this you know this uh greater than function mm. is pretty um it's pretty cool how it works but it it does i think it does assume that the number is an integer, right? Like it won't work for a, right. if you throw a floating point number in. That's right. Yep. And there are implementations that handle floating point. Actually, I just off the top of my head remember. Uh, oh, actually, one of the ones we're going to look at. Okay, so we have one more. Oh, yeah, our negative numbers. That's another good one. Mm -hmm. So let's look at the greater than one. That was something that jumped out to me too when I first saw this. So what do you think about this? Uh, I think it's clever. Yeah, it's. Um, yeah, it's it's funny. It's funny when you're working with, uh, you know, type type level programming. Like some some of the primitives that you just assume assume in like normal, you know, JavaScript land, like addition mm -hmm. and subtraction and yeah. less than and greater than or equal equal. Um, 
just you don't have equivalents of them and it's it's kind of wild how people have gone to great lengths to to build those up yeah does it now that you see it does it make sense to you how it works uh yeah i i think the um yeah it it makes sense at a at a high level like i think you i i'm i'm curious how it deals with numbers of different length like i assume maybe it pads one of them yeah it just um, it doesn't yeah it can only do digit at a time and so yeah. what we end up doing is making another type so that's what greater than digits has and what we end up doing inside there is handling each part digit by digit so mm -hmm. we're looking at the like the leftmost digit of x and the leftmost digit of y and we're seeing if they're the same if they're not the same then we pass in, uh, or I'm sorry, if they are the same, then it's not worth it to even look. We pass in the rest of the characters and can continue looking. Otherwise, yeah. we pass in here. So that's a nice feature. Which is of this. interesting because if you've if you've been doing the um, yeah, if you're doing the digit by digit comparison from left to right, like you only find out later that like they weren't aligned uh, and that comparison didn't make sense. Unless unless we've like padded one of them by the time we call greater than digits. Um, let's let's look. Yeah, that's a good question. How it how it handles that? Um, yep. Yeah, there I it see is. the stuff with xlen yln. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. Okay. So the right. So if if a number extends another number, then they're they must be the same. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, and that's the equality at that level. Yep. So. From greater than, we go to greater than digits. From greater than digits, we go to greater than digit. And then, yeah, we recurse at some level of those three things until we get our answer back. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Uh, that's, I mean, it's it's kind of incredible that it works. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think so, too. And this was, I have to say, this was one of the most simple solutions. Uh, yeah. I'm... Yeah, yeah, they get they get pretty uh, pretty out there in the wild. Uh, this one though, super cool. Um, K K A I L L on GitHub. So yeah, I mean there isn't there aren't as many moving pieces to this one. I think that's probably a fact of how bubble sort is different. Um, anything oh, yeah. I, I could go he through it. The, is there anything the that from this one just thing. looking at it that jumps out to you? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess that yeah, this thing about reverse, like that's that's probably how I would have implemented it too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, let's look at reverse real quick while we're talking about it. So here it is. It's one of the challenges. I should have uh, t extends unknown. Yeah, I guess so in this it looks case, like you use a you use like an accumulator here as well. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, for oh oh, where where are you here? Oh, just at the bottom at reverse. Yeah, you can use a rec accumulator to solve it, but you can also oh, just do this it. This one doesn't actually. Yeah. Right, you can just do it in line, and it's yeah. been a big lesson for me actually. Uh, you definitely get into a mode solving these things day in and day out of just like reaching for the accumulator immediately, but I've come to find there are a lot of cases where you don't necessarily need to. Uh, this is one of them. You can implement yeah. it without. Do you um? Do you get? Or, or can the can you work with longer lists if you don't use the or if you do use the accumulator? I thought there was something about like uh, tail call optimization. Yeah, there there is a there is a TCO uh, tail, tail call op, uh, optimization that was added. I don't know if it. I, I don't know for sure if it triggers in this case, um, but I think that it. I, I can't imagine that the performance is worse with this. It's got to be better than if we had an accumulator. Um, well, this, yeah, this isn't this isn't the tail call form right because you right. do you do something after um you do the recursive call but mm -hmm. uh yeah if you if you wrote this if you reworked this to use like a pure a pure uh, like a, an accumulator um then i i think well i don't know the, i guess <laughs> we're talking about sort not reverse but uh sure sure yeah there, it's it's sort of interesting the difference between those um okay so from the top we have v extends t length <laughs> so Okay, wait, 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 no, not that's not the top, sorry. So T is a number array, okay, so that gets mm -hmm. passed along, and it gets passed to bubble sort, here we are. So V is like some accumulator, we should probably name this as such, sorry about that. So if we're done, um, 
then so we what, just yeah what is the accumulator like it's the is it the number of um entries that we've sorted so far i think so oh okay yeah and so then once it extends yeah once it's so extends here is like equals so once once it's once we've sorted the first n elements of an n element array then we can just return the array because yes. it's sorted right and then <laughs> Oh yeah, add add one is like a, another surprisingly hard one to uh, implement. <laughs> well, I mean, in in this case, we're just using the the counters, so yeah. we we have to we have yeah. to switch to uh, so go, jumping down, you know, we have to go to number number two array to turn that number into a tuple, and this one does use an accumulator. Um, I think there's there is maybe a way to solve. Um, is this also? Uh, let me just, for fun, try. No, okay. Uh, in any case, uh, I don't know. It, like, I guess my point is just this is this is not how you would, you know, necessarily expect to add one to a number. Oh, oh, right? oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> See, I'm such damaged goods after spending so long <laughs> looking at these things. Like, this is like, oh yeah, yeah, add one, add one, and you're like, no, it's <laughs> crazy that this has to happen. Um, yes, adding adding one is something that like your CPU is actually really good at. And this is definitely <laughs> not how it's doing that. Yeah, instead, uh, yeah, we're we're going through quite a lot. Well, it's that's the thing. It's it's if uh, this is the last kind of remaining Wild West of the TypeScript type system. Not maybe not the last, but it's definitely one of the remaining Wild West scenarios. Is when you have to start doing actual arithmetic. Um, you have to resort to wild things. Like there's no other way to do it. Um, I mean, or number registers, like I was talking about. All right. And yeah, then, I mean, I guess you could, all, yeah, you could also um, convert it to a string and operate on the digits. Right. And that, yep. that would, you know, all right. I mean, that's like a going from O of n to O of log n. So that's, exactly. that is potentially like a huge win. And then we have, uh, so then we have greater than. It's, let's see, how is this different? So bubble sort once. Did are we going out of order here? Bubble. Okay, add one and number. Okay, we got that. So we have to cast a number because you know hashtag reasons. But then bubble sort once. So inside bubble sort <laughs> once, we grab the first two values, and then the rest. If x is greater than y, then we put y. Spread bubble sort, and then we we pass x back in. We like throw it. You're, you're back in the game, X. Um, we recurse again with bubble sort. Not bubble sort once, but bubble sort from the top. Mm -hmm. And we do the inverse of that if uh, Y is greater than X, then, it, you know, because we're sorting bubble from sort lowest to greatest. Bubble sort is like N squared, right? Yeah, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't have a computer yeah. science degree, so I'm not, I, I don't think I know the answer. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, it's super n squared. Cool. Um, that would make sense. Yeah, it's. I. I mean, it's not. It does not. It does not seem very efficient because, like, what you know, I if do. If you're just comparing the, if you're just comparing the first two and swapping them if needed, like you don't necessarily. Yeah, I don't know. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to do a lot of work before you're confident that that first one is actually like the, the smallest. There's, there's just a lot of recursion going around going on here. There is a lot. Yeah, and it's at multiple levels too, and that makes it worse. That like they kind of have a, there's like a dependency diamond in some of these about how they call each other recursively too. Um, yeah, and greater than, I'm not sure this is like wildly different. Let me find, what's the one we had before? Let's put it on the screen here just so we can see them next to each other. Uh, this this implementation of greater than is actually wildly different. Um, oh, okay. So this, this, one, uh, this one is way less efficient. Um, like this actually c like makes... Uh, or, or no, maybe num is number to array, is it an array of the digits or is it uh, like an array of length X? An array of length X. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this, you know, if, if we're comparing like one to a million, this will construct an array of length one, an array of length a million, and mm -hmm. we can see like what their type relationship is between them, which, you know, this, this implementation is a lot simpler, but, um, it's yeah, it, it's the same thing. It's like the difference between n and log n time, right? Like the yep, you know, a million, you know, constructing a, an array of length a million, like you have you have a million elements, whereas you only have 
like a million has seven digits in it. So uh, yeah, that's a that's a pretty dramatic difference. Yeah, but you know the code is simpler. So the code is simpler. Is that. <laughs> well, um, there's I, you know there's there's a lot of ways to solve these things, like you're saying, and they all take trade offs in different directions. What I think is interesting is that I mean. There's a whole website called Stack Overflow, right? So I think in programming we hit this a lot, where we hit some upper bound of a constraint of the length of the not even the language, like of a computer. And you know, I think that this is one of those situations where it's kind of interesting that the constraint is so incredibly low for it's like a double digit number of recursions that we can go for TypeScript. Uh, <laughs> rather than like you know multiple millions w that we would be used to in a language like JavaScript before we hit any kind mm -hmm. of Stack Overflow type scenario. Yeah, um, I, I think there's there's a lot of um, there's a lot of cases where you can have like quadratic behavior kind of by accident. Um, yeah. Like I think there's even a website like accidentally n squared .com or accidentally quadratic. Yeah, yeah, I know like, the one you're talking about. Yeah. What is yeah, it? Yeah, this comes up a lot of the t a lot of times in um, regular expressions too. Like it's very easy to write a regular expression that has pathological behavior. And yeah, I think you, you know usually like computers are fast enough and your inputs are small enough that you don't notice until like there's some really bad input that that triggers that behavior. Um, but like you said, with TypeScript, the limit is so low that uh, we actually do run into it more often. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe it's a good thing. It, it's good to think about this. It makes it fun. Um, after all, the number of times we really need to do exactly this kind of thing with the numbers in a real life scenario is, as far as I'm aware, zero. <laughs> I sure hope so. I mean. That is a common complaint to these uh, challenges, just wrapping it all up with a bow. Like, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people chime in and say, why the hell would you ever need to do that? And it's like, well, come with me to the React types and I'll show you why. Or come with me to, yeah. the, to the TRPC types or to the Zod types and I'll explain where some of these skills come into play. Although you don't definitely need to do this exact thing, you need to be able to think in these terms and like work through this stuff in these ways if you want to write libraries or maintain libraries like that for lots of reasons. And it's usually, yeah. you know, they're learning exercises, so they're going to be distilled down. But anyway, well, and you know, here's I mean, here's a use case for this. Like you you were mentioning earlier in the earlier in this um, session that you uh, you're running into like stability issues with the order of unions, right? That mm -hmm. like, you know, it, sometimes it would render as A or B, sometimes it would render as B or A. I wonder if there's a way with sorted to like get a canonical order, you know? Uh, yeah, uh, maybe maybe that's a maybe that's a type challenge. There there is one um, tuple. I'm sorry, union to tuple. So there is one that I I really despise called union to tuple. Um, let's like here. I'm just gonna like. Uh, it's exactly like you're saying. It just converts a union into a tuple, and then the you can sort it after that and it's like anyway I, I rant about this in the, the the time we solve it but um you know unions are unstructured like there shouldn't be an order to you it shouldn't matter mm -hmm. what the order of the union is it shouldn't matter but yet we hit scenarios in real life where it does matter maybe because we need to change how we approach things or maybe because it shouldn't I mean who knows there's different reasons but yeah it's exactly like you're saying there's a uh, oh well <laughs> well maybe we should just fix that problem in uh like ESLint expect type uh ra you know rather than in the type system that would be awesome um yeah I would uh I, I'm I'm very excited for that future of TypeScript uh after doing all of these challenges I am I could not imagine not having tests for my types at this point for going forward because I've been doing it so much now and I've been seeing the value of being able to like check your assertions. It's really common actually that you implement something and then add to it and it breaks something like that worked a while ago and you don't realize it, but it works for the complex case or the edge case that you're trying to fix. Yep. So you end up yeah, chasing your I tail. Think, um... I think people, if if people discover you know test driven development and like functional programming through the TypeScript type system, like great, you know it's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird, but uh, you know 
people people discover programming through like Excel. So you know that's it's not so different. <laughs> I did my first programming that I think I did was like a was it Quark Express? Mm -hmm. Um, there's a you know um. Yeah, that's right. It's a, no, not Quark Express. Is it? Mm, there was a Quark uh, spreadsheet software. Um, I think Express was the page layout program. Right. Um, well, anyway, Excel, basically Excel. Yeah. yeah. My my mother was uh, in doing in, involved in real estate and was had a big spreadsheet open of all the different things, and uh, I was very curious about how the what's going on there. How does that work? I think it's uh, that in video games. You know, those two things. That's that's my life story. That's why I'm an engineer. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much, Dan. Um, this yeah, was a fun thank one. Yeah, huh? this was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs>